Uh, I get to wait 15 seconds now before this starts. I'll just start. Uh, my name is Greg Dunlap, and uh, I used to write operating system software for slot machines. And when people learn about this, one of the first questions that they always ask me is, uh, are slot machines rigged? And do slot machines cheat? And in what ways do slot machines want to take my money? And this presentation is a way for me to try and answer that question. Um, one of the things that you should know about the entire slot machine and gambling device industry is that it's one of the most regulated industries in the world. In order, in order for us to get our games approved by the regulatory agencies, we had to submit our source code and our entire tool chain so that they could build our slot machines from scratch. There are some other devices in public use which don't undergo the same level of scrutiny. Um, I'll, I'll leave the reasoning behind that as an exercise for the viewer. Um, but one of the keys to these regulations that we had to follow for slot machines was that every uh, action on a slot machine has to be completely random and completely independent. We had some of the most widely tested number generator, n random number generators there are, and every uh, action had to be completely independent. You couldn't say, uh, if I get this symbol on this reel, then give me this symbol on this reel, or give me this stuff at this time of day or anything like that. Now, to understand uh, how this translates into the ways that uh, slot machines work, we're going to have to get into math a little bit, but it's not too scary and it should be fine. So imagine, if you will, a slot machine with one reel with 10 stops on it. On nine of the stops, there's nothing, and on one of the stops, there's a law cat. Now, imagine it costs $1 to play this slot machine, and when you hit the nine blank stops, you get nothing, and when you hit the law cat, you get $9 back. So, in a completely random world, over the long term, this slot machine is going to pay back 90% of what it takes in. It costs a dollar to play, nine times out of ten you're going to get $9 back, so for every $10 you put in, you're getting $9 back. That's the principle of the way slot machines work. You can extrapolate this out, again, to another slot machine, which has ten, three reels of ten stops and various combinations of law cats, and you can construct a pay table that still returns 90% of it. If we wanted to make it return 80%, we could have each of these pay $160. This is the key to how slot machines work in the end. It's all about simply paying out less than you take in for some things that happen various amounts of time. And that's just the key for how they work. It's all math. That's how they take your money. But that's not the entire story about whether slot machines are rigged or not, because there's a lot of things that they do to, to make you want to play them. Um, we're about to see a picture here of B.F. Skinner. B.F. Skinner did a lot of uh, experiments in behavioral psychology in the 50s. And what he experimented with is how people respond to various internal stimulus and what compels people to make actions based on certain types of reinforcement. And what he found was that when you give someone varying types of reinforcement of various um, of varying um, values, then that's the most compelling type of behavior that you can uh, give to people. It's more compelling than giving them the same thing all the time or at the same times. And slot machines are built around this very principle to give you something at varying times and of varying values. And, a lot of, and one of the things that they do to compel that is they do what's called near misses. They make it more likely for you to get two jackpot symbols and miss the third one than to actually win. Now, if every action is random and independent, then how can they do that? Well, they can do that in a lot of ways. Like, for instance, they can put three jackpot symbols on the first two reels and one on the last one. Mathematically, that means you're going to get more near misses than you're going to get wins. And that's one of the ways in which they, uh, in which they hack into your brain. It's, and the weird thing is that near misses are actually more compelling to get a person to play more than actually winning something psychologically. And it became so bad in the, in the 90s that Las Vegas had to issue rules about how many near misses you could get in a uh, slot machine game. Another problem that the manufacturers had after a while was that with, with so many physical reels and stops, you can only afford to pay out so much money before you get to the point where you're giving back everything that you've made. And a guy named Ingen Telnes in 1984 came up with an idea of mapping virtual reels in software to physical reels. That means even though there may only be 32 reels on this slot machine, in the software there may be 1,500 reels that all map to an individual reel. And that allows them to expand the odds massively to give you, you know, multiple millions of dollars of payouts while still appearing to look like you have a 1 in 32 chance of hitting any specific reel. Um, this was incredibly popular, as you might imagine, and allowed us to do things like score $11 million jackpots. And in the modern day, with video slots, 
there could be tens of millions of reels. Nobody knows anything about what that represents anymore. There's no con con context of physical reality at all. So when people ask me if slot machines are rigged, they don't cheat in the way that people think that they do. What they do is they hack your brain and to make you think you can win a lot more than you can, which in a lot of ways is much more insidious than if they had just made them pay out every day at 6 o'clock. Thanks a lot.